Hiya, I'm that James Wisdom and this is another episode of And Another Thing and today I'm going to be talking about the Uber ban in London and online toxicity. <laughs> Alright, so hello everyone. Today's video is going to contain um, strong language and things that people may find offensive. We're going to be talking about language, about um, online language and the use of racial slurs and stuff like that. So if you find that stuff uncomfortable or offensive, you don't have to watch this video. Uh, I am not going to be censoring myself and using um, kind of equivalents to the words used. I'm going to be saying them out loud and I'm going to be talking about them and about the things that are going on. Now, that is just something I do. I don't like to um, censor myself when I'm talking about you know, say racial slurs or about abusive language or that kind of stuff. I feel like that kind of defeats the purpose. If we can't talk about it and use those words, how on earth are we ever going to combat that kind of stuff? So that's just my opinion. So if you don't like bad language, you, you find the use of, just the use of, even in discussion, certain racial slurs and um, words and things like that offensive, this video is not for you, just to let you know that. Now, that's not the only thing we're going to be talking about today. We're not just going to be talking about uh, bad language online. That's part of what it is. But we're also going to be talking about the Uber ban in London, which is also quite a controversial topic. Um, and I think that's all I'm going to talk about today. I usually try and do three things, but I think two is enough for today. So let's start with the uh, online toxicity debate that's been going on recently. So I think it was two weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago, either... Yeah, within the last two weeks, anyway, that's the point of this. And another thing, in the last two weeks, this is something I think needs talking about or I want to talk about. So, in the last two weeks, um, the massive online personality, YouTube gaming professional, or whatever you want to call them, PewDiePie, said a racial slur in one of his live streams. And the big debate here is... Is this because of um, an innate online toxicity? So his uh, uh, argument was that he had picked it up from having played online games so much and it became something that he was desensitised to, so he just said it. Um, or is there something more to it than that? So that's, that's the debate here is, well, is this guy just being racist or did he accidentally slip up because of the community itself. So is it the community's fault or is it the individual's fault? Or is it nobody's fault and everybody's just blowing out proportion? I think that last one is fairly obvious and it's not really um, something that it's nobody's fault and it's just okay and everybody's blowing out proportion. I think that is just an incorrect argument in general because there's definitely something to talk about here. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, PewDiePie, the online gamer, um, Felix, I forget his last name off the top of my head, sorry. Felix, um, he was online, he was playing an online shooter um, and he was getting frustrated at the game, like we all do. We all get frustrated when we play games on occasion. Um, and he shouted or he said uh, at this person, directed at someone, what a fucking nigger. So that's what he said. He said, oh my God, what a fucking nigger. I mean, really etc 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 and that is kind of not okay um, and obviously he got a huge amount of backlash from that uh, Felix is already a fairly uh, polarizing person as it is um, with him try his his sort of attempts at comedy um, which really like walk the line between offensive and racist and um, bigotry and all of that kind of stuff um, and just being kind of risque comedy, yeah. That that's what he he tends to walk. This was nothing to do with that. He's been able to argue himself out. Okay, that was a joke, and it didn't come out the way I had intended. It didn't get received the way I had intended. That's what he had always said previously when he'd had um, people accusing him of being a Nazi or supporting Nazis, and because he was saying death to all the Jews and all these other things that he's done in the past. Um, as potential jokes. This, however, is something where he was on online playing a game and he called someone a nigger. He called someone a fucking nigger. And that 
is about, um, you know, that, that's not a joke. That's someone calling someone an insult. And the problem here is, of course, that he is saying this as an insult directed towards a person. Now, personally, I don't think that... Um, everybody should be banned from saying the word nigger in the same way I don't think anyone should be banned from saying, you know, fuck or cunt or whatever. Any of those other words, you know, they're just words at the end of the day. And it's how you use them that gives them the power or gives them the offensive nature that they they take on. Now, of course, the word nigger is a de derogatory term, generally speaking, but it has been co-opted into um, certain cultures and certain um lifestyles as something that's like saying brother yeah so in black culture as far as i understand it anyway as far as i understand it you can you know a black man can call another black man a nigger because it's like saying hey brother hey man that kind of thing um if you use it in a particular way of course someone like felix a, a white man um calling someone a nigger when they say when they're frustrated and angry at them is definitely an insult or meant as an insult whether or not it's taken as an insult is up to the person receiving but it is meant as an insult and as soon as you start doing that then you're being you know overtly racist basically um, you are saying that I consider being called a nigger or being a nigger a um, a slur or a um, a detriment or an insult you know so there's, there's a difference between using that kind of language and just being angry and frustrated online. I play games online quite a lot. And I don't tend to have mic and headphones on. Um, so I'm not directing any of my things I say at other people anyway. But I will swear. And I will say, oh, you bastard. Or, you know, that kind of thing. Oh, that's really fucking irritating. Those kinds of things. And I will get angry and I'll get frustrated and I'll, sh I'll shout at, you know the character that's getting in my way or annoying me or stopping me doing well or, you know, sometimes you just come up against someone who is doing better than you and it can be really irritating if they just keep killing you or they keep getting in your way and blocking whatever you're trying to do. And being frustrated is just part of human nature. Swearing, whilst it's not an attractive quality, is just something that people do when they're frustrated sometimes. And of course, you can train yourself not to do that. But as soon as you start doing that with a racial slur, it's something more than just online toxicity. Me t telling someone, oh, you're a fucking idiot or you're fucking irritating is very different to me calling someone a fucking nigger, isn't it? There's a big difference there. Now, swearing at someone online obviously isn't a nice thing to do. And that's the debate here is, you know, there's this toxicity online where people are playing online games and they are just throwing insults back and forth at one another. And I do think there is an issue there to be considered. But I think the thing that we really ought to talk about here is the difference between that frustrated anger directed at people that you might say, oh, sorry, I didn't really mean that. Um, you know, I didn't I didn't mean to you know call you a cunt or call you a, an asshole or whatever, because all you were doing is playing the game better than me. Kudos. Well done. You know. In the moment, I was frustrated, so I called you that, but I didn't really mean it. Whereas if you call someone a nigger, that doesn't, that, that's not something you can just say, sorry, I didn't really mean to call you a nigger, because it's not about what you, uh, what you intended to say, it's what you actually said. And the fact that you personally, having said that, clearly consider that word to mean something insulting. And when that's tied to a race or a creed or um, a belief or anything like that, that is, you know, that's racist and that that's in, insulting an entire group rather than insulting an in, individual with a, a more blanket term like calling someone, you know, a fucker or bastard or whatever, you know, those kind of things. So that I think is the argument there personally. And, and my personal belief on this is that Felix should not have said that, you know, he needs to take a look at himself. And I think actually his apology video um, is worth noting here. His apology video that said, yeah, I said that there's no excuse for me having said that. It seemed to me like him taking a look at himself and realizing that actually he was entirely in the wrong here. And 
apologising. And hopefully this means that he will take a, a look at himself introspectively and say, right, so what, what led me to think that way? What led me to end up using that term and actually considering that term an insult rather than using something more generic or, you know, just a swear word rather than a racial slur? Um, and hopefully then he will combat that and change that, change his opinion on that kind of thing. And hopefully he doesn't actually believe that once he's taken a look at himself and says, actually, you know what, I shouldn't be thinking this way. I need to adjust my behaviour. Um, I need to adjust the way I think about race and all of that kind of stuff. If he does that, I think you don't give him a pass, but you give him the opportunity to prove that he's getting better, to prove himself as someone who, who made a mistake and can learn from that. Because we all make mistakes. I have, um, in the past, been very anti-feminism because I didn't like feminism. I didn't believe in feminism. I took a very hard look at myself and I took a hard look at the lives of women and went, actually, you know what? I've been an idiot. I've been wrong here. And now I absolutely believe in feminism and that women get treated not equally to men and all of that kind of stuff. So there's there's definitely a point at which you can say, I made a mistake, I had these assumptions, this thing, da, 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 da. I've brought attention to it myself and now I can say, actually, I've changed as a person and I have different beliefs now. That's okay and I think that's important. We need to look at the online community and work out you know, why there's this toxicity um, and people who are using racial slurs need to be held accountable for that um, in a way that allows them to to realise that they are wrong or that they are doing something that is particularly offensive or mean and then stop doing it and make themselves better. Uh, and that is the only way to really fix the community. You can't just ban people for saying something that you don't agree with, but you can, you know, you can hold people accountable for their own actions. And I think that's what we need to do, hold people accountable and then give them the opportunity to improve and be better human beings. So that was part one of the video. Now, part two of this video is all about Uber, the what they call ride sharing app, um, being banned in London. So as of last week, TfL, Transport for London, decided not to renew Uber's license to operate inside London. And this means that Uber basically have to make an appeal as to why they should be allowed to operate in London. Um, otherwise, there, there will be no Ubers in London. And now there are a couple of, you know, main opinions on this. And I think a lot of people are quite upset by this. And I, I was ready to be really annoyed by this. And I am a little annoyed by it, I have to say. Uh, I don't use Uber much at all. I've used it once or twice when I've been with other people who have gone, oh, let's get an Uber. And we've got an Uber and it's been great. And it's been really, really convenient because they drive to exactly where you are, pick you up, drive you to where you want to be and you're all set. All you have to do is use an app. You don't have to have cash on you. You don't have to pay anyone directly on the, uh, in the inside of the car or anything like that. So I think it's a great service and it's a very modern, up-to-date way of doing taxis. And that's the thing that I like about it. And that's the thing that I think most people are annoyed about is the fact that, well, if this goes, we don't have anything like this. It's like going backwards. It feels like going back and using taxis is just a, an irritating process because I can't pay on my phone. I can't, you know, get it directly to where I want, to, uh, where I am, particularly in London. You have to go to taxi ranks, generally speaking, in London, or you have to hail one at the side of the road. Um, so, you know, getting a black cab in London feels kind of old fashioned to me now, almost. Um, and it's certainly not as kind of forward thinking as as uh, as Uber and using your phone just for an app. Having looked into it, though, there are certain very good reasons that uh, TfL seem to have decided to to block um, the renewal of the license that Uber have. Um, and one of those reasons, well, they've given they've cited four reasons in the document that they've made public. One of the reasons is that they are saying that um, Uber do not do the appropriate security checks on their um, drivers, which we'll talk about in a second because I've read conflicting information about this from different sources. Um, another one is that they use this uh, grey ball system across 
a bunch of different cities across the world, you get basically blacklisted with a Grable system, from what I can tell from what I've read. Um, and Uber's response to this has not been adequate for TfL. They Uber say that they've never used it in London and it's never something they've used and they've stopped using it elsewhere after they were caught using it. But um, I don't think Transport for London were particularly convinced by that argument, so they've cited that. So you've got... Um, yeah, so you've got security checks, um, Grable, um, the reporting of crimes from Uber and Uber in contact with police. Now that is a big one and that's the kind of major one from what I can tell. On the Uber app, you can report a driver. So if something happens in the cab, you can report it to Uber and then Uber will follow that up as a kind of official case and uh, investigate the driver. But the issue is that Uber are not particularly um, caring in sharing that with the police. They do not share that information with the police in a way that the police are happy with. They do not directly say, OK, we've had a report here and then instantly report that to the police. What they do is they investigate themselves and then they report it to the police after they've done their own internal investigation um, to discuss and. From what I can tell, this is all to do with them saving face. So if someone does make a report and it's a false report, it never gets heard about by anyone in public because it's all contained within this private company. But the problem with that, of course, is if it is a real case, that driver may still be driving around, picking people up, and it can cause secondary incidences or even tertiary incidences. That also means that cases are much harder for the police to prosecute because by the time they hear about it, if there has been a case, they are then unable to really prosecute because, or find the appropriate evidence because it's been too long for them to do so. And in a couple of cases I read about, the information didn't even get back to um, the police within six months. And of course, if the report is made six months later, they can't do anything because there's no prosecution can be made. So the case is, even though there was a, a sufficient evidence to prosecute someone for an assault or for whatever it was, the police were unable to prosecute them because Uber had not given the information quickly enough. Now, this is really important. And this, to me, is the big thing and the big deal here, because I don't think the number of assaults on Uber seems to actually be all that high. I looked up Uber attacks, Uber London assaults, it was specifically. And they said in most sources I could find that there were 32 assault charges over the course of a year. Now that seems like quite a high number, that's one every 11 days or something I read. Um, and that seems like quite a high thing, but it is not an uncommon thing to happen on public transport generally. So in total that year, there were over 150 cases of assaults reported. So that 30 is not actually that many, especially when you consider that Uber report to, you know, say that they're, they're doing 30,000, um, rides a day or something like that. Um, it's a, you know, there's a, a very large number of rides a day anyway, whatever the num the actual number is, is not super important. It is a very low percentage, less than 1%, I think it was, um, of a, like charges to rides. Um, and of course there's 150 reported every year in transport for London generally. So that includes black cabs who certainly don't have a spotless history because this is the argument a lot of people are making that black cabs are the reason that people uh, that uber is being banned or that's an assumption that people seem to be making even though it doesn't appear to be the case um but a lot of people are complaining about black cabs because black cabs are way more expensive a lot less convenient and they don't have any better a record than uber in terms of assault charges so from what I can tell, from what I can garner from my research, the reason and the main core reason is that Uber as a company are the problem. They are not effectively reporting to police. And they, I think from what I've read in terms of um, the press releases from Uber, is that they will be, if, if they have a report levied against a driver on the app, they will stop the driver from driving until the, uh, or from giving lifts until 
the case has been investigated, um, but they expect the person who has been assaulted or whatever to also report it to police. So they basically are saying that they will not report to police unless the person who is um, making the assault charge reports it to police themselves. And that seems to be one of the problems that uh, Transport for London have with Uber. If Uber won't report problems to police and they leave it up to the passenger who was assaulted to do that and then the police are investigating uh, something like that, they can't get information from Uber because Uber says actually our policy is not to give you any information um, unless we've been told to by the, the customer, the person who has um, reported the incident on our app. So there's, there seems to be a disconnect there between Uber and the police. The police have made a number of statements saying that they couldn't prosecute because Uber didn't give them information that they, they needed or that they didn't give them the, the information quickly enough or that um, people who had been accused of an assault charge had actually already been under investigation by Uber, but Uber had not passed that information on to the police. Um, and that, I think, is the big deal. That is a very big deal. If Uber are not reporting to the police when assault charges are made to protect face or to save face, sorry, to protect their interests, then they are doing something that absolutely they need to address. And I think that might be something that we see happen here. And hopefully that will be something we see happen here because I would really like Uber not to go away. I think Uber is a great service and I think it is for people who don't want to have to wander the streets to find a cab. That might be people with loads of expensive equipment. I know a photographer who uses Uber to get to shoots that she's doing. So when she is going and shooting, a, like doing a shoot for a client, she uses Uber. They will pick her up and all of her gear, put it in the car, drive it to where she needs to be. She can get all her gear out of the car and be at the shoot. She doesn't have to drive, uh, walk to a, a cab, work out what the fare is going to be. She knows the fare. She knows everything because it's all on the app. It's all of that kind of stuff. She needs to very, very simply because of the app. And it is a much better system. There's also a feeling of safety. A lot of people feel much safer when they're using Uber because the Uber app allows you to track someone. So you can say, I'm getting an Uber. And then anyone that's in your friends list can track that Uber and track your location so that if something does happen, you've got that security. So there's a lot of issues and that's a lot of the reports I've seen since this ban or uh, non-renewal of the license um, has happened. A lot of people are talking about how it feels less safe to be getting a cab or getting on the bus or getting on the train because any random person could be there. And there are just as many assault charges, if not more, on those services as there are on Uber. So it's not because Uber have lots and lots of assault charges. It's because Uber as a company don't seem to be dealing with them well. So for me, I really hope Uber just sort themselves out. You know, they say, OK, we'll come up with a new policy for the reporting of incidents and how we communicate with police that will then hopefully allow their their appeal to go through and they will actually get to continue in London. The other thing that I haven't mentioned yet that I said I would is the, the way that Uber assess their drivers. So the checks that their drivers go through. Uber uh, officially states that their checks are exactly the same as a black cab driver check, uh, the DBS check, uh, which is the, just the security check. They do the, the full security check, the same as a black cab driver would have um, when they are applying for their license to drive a cab around in London. The argument here, of course, is, is that going on? Some reports say that they don't. Some reports say that they do. Some reports say that these drivers are checked, but not quite as securely as those people. If they are getting the same checks as the uh, black cab people, then great. The thing that I read that it says that Uber don't check for is medical history, which I'm not sure is entirely relevant. I mean, I feel like they should be checking medical history um, to make sure that they are safe to drive the car. But the medical history shouldn't have any real impact on um, the regularity of assault charges. So I think that that's really where we come down to is Uber need to do the appropriate checks, whether or not they're doing them at the moment. Hopefully they are. Um, although the report says they might not be. And I think that's it. I think that's really my opinion on that. 
as well as kind of a broad overview of what's going on. Because I think a lot of people have jumped to the conclusion that why is Uber going away? I like Uber. Hmm. And then I had a bit of a strop, which is fine because I did that immediately. That's my first response was, hey, that's that seems stupid because black cabs are not as good as Uber. Um, but that's it. That's my opinion on the topic. What do you think of these things, though? So what is your opinion on the online gaming community? And what is your opinion on Uber, either in London or outside of London, um, where you live? That's it. Keep smiling. Thank you very kindly. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you all next week for another one. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. I appreciate that it's quite a long one, this video, but it was stuff that's worth talking about. If you want to check out previous things I've talked about, down below me is a list of all of the other and other things. And then next to that is Naked Truth.